They're, they're like that fire brand plucked out of the fire. They're purified. They're an offering pleasing to God. And because of that, they can stand before God's throne. Uh, you know, that's a, a pretty big thing because if you think of the Old Testament and when the law was given, God's throne was in that Holy of Holies. And the priest only went in. The high priest is the only one who went in. He went in once a year. He had to have certain sacrifices done on altars outside. He had to be washed in water. He had to have certain clothing that he wore because he would be struck dead if he came in there and he was physically impure when he offered that sacrifice. Here you've got all the saved people from the tribulation period, all of it saved Israel there, and they're standing before the throne of God. Back in the Old Testament, that never would have worked. They would have all been struck dead because their sins were not atoned for, but because of the blood of Christ purging their sins, then they can stand before the throne of God. And when they stand here, now it's a picture of the kingdom. Now, they're not in the kingdom yet because they're still in heaven. Um, but it's a picture of it because in verse 3 here, we'll see them singing. They sing two songs. It says in chapter 15, verse 3, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Uh, I wrote on your outline, the song of Moses is found in Exodus 15, verses 1 through 19. And really, it's a song of deliverance, where in chapter 14, they had gone through the Red Sea on dry ground. Pharaoh and his army followed. And, of course, once Israel got through the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his army were in the Red Sea, God closed the water upon them. Pharaoh and his army drowned. Moses and the nation of Israel were safe on dry land on the other side. And so they sang a song of deliverance in Exodus 15. That song of deliverance, they say, the Lord is a man of war. So I wrote on your outline that that song is sung to Jesus as God. You know, it, man could not have taken the Red Sea, parted it, allowed Israel to go through dry land and then bring the water again and have Pharaoh and his army drown. That was the power of God. So it shows God's deliverance of Israel um, through the Red Sea. So the song of Moses represents God's deliverance. The song of the Lamb is, a represent, is again, God's deliverance, but it was through His death on the cross. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He was sacrificed as the Passover lamb upon the cross. And so as the lamb, he gained that victory over death, but he did so as the perfect man, the man who had lived a life without sin, and then he took the punishment for sin. He was made sin. So I wrote on your outline that the song of the lamb is given here and is sung to Jesus as the perfect man. So with them singing the song of Moses and singing the song of the Lamb, it shows that they recognize the Lord Jesus Christ both as fully God and as fully man, giving the, having the power to bring the spiritual deliverance as God that man could not have, but then also having the power as the perfect man to be that sacrifice on the cross to bring them deliverance. So you've got both aspects there. You also have both aspects in, the, in what they say there in the last part of verse 3, because it says, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. His works, uh, your next fill in the blank is that his works are everything he accomplished at his first coming. His ways are his commandments which separate believing Israel from apostate Israel. So his works are everything he accomplished at his first coming. His ways are his commandments, which separate believing Israel from apostate Israel. Uh, we'll see that, uh, the ways there, if we go over to the book of Hosea. Uh, so if you have Jer uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and then Hosea. The last verse in the book of Hosea, chapter 14. Hosea chapter 14, verse 9. It tells you about the ways of the Lord and how they distinguish. We've talked about the tribulation period being that refiner's fire. 
It separates the wheat from the tares. The tares are the unbeliever. unbelievers in Israel. They are burned. <coughs> the wheat are the believers. They are saved. And uh, we see here at Hosea 14, the last verse there, in verse 9, it tells you that it's the ways of the Lord, the commandments there, that separate out basically the wheat from the tares. Are they following? Are they walking in the ways of the Lord? Well, those would be the believers. If they're not walking in them, that would be the unbelievers. It says there in Hosea 14, verse 9, Who is wise, and he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. So there's the ways, the commandments of the Lord. And now we're going to see the distinction here. It says, and the just shall walk in them. So those are the believers. They're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And then it says, but the transgressors shall fall therein. Those are your unbelievers. So, uh, so when we're back in Revelation 15 and verse 3, we see great and marvelous are thy works. That's what he did at the first coming. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. So then his commandments then are what separate the people. And it's like I wrote on your outline. In other words, it's a lot like Romans 3.22. Romans 3.22 says that the righteousness of God, that all for the righteousness is unto all, but is only upon all them that believe. So the offer of righteousness given to every man who's ever lived, but those who receive it are only those who believe. And so it's the same thing. So I said, in other words, his works, or what he did at his first coming, his perfect life, his death on the cross, those make the offer of the kingdom unto all of Israel. But his ways show it is only upon those who believe. The righteousness of God is offered unto all of Israel, but only those who walk in his ways, those are the just, they shall live by them. Those are the ones who receive eternal life in the kingdom. Um, so, so there's a lot in chapter 15, verse 3, that they sing the song of Moses, Jesus is God, and the song of the Lamb, Jesus is man, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, what Jesus did on the cross, Just and true are thy ways. That's what man did. Did he have faith in what God told him? Did he walk in those ways or not? Um, so, let me go ahead and give you, since we're out of time, we won't cover verse 4. Let me go ahead and give you the fill in the blanks and we'll cover that next week. Uh, in verse 4, we see it says, All nations shall come and worship before thee. So you're filling the blank there is all nations are blessed in Israel and the Abrahamic covenant. And we'll go over how that works out next week. And then you also notice from verse 4 it says, uh, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. He's the only one holy. Then the question may be, well, how is it then that we are able to, to approach the throne of God are these people here, the tribulation saints. How are they able to stand before the throne of God if they're not holy? And the answer is, like when we started the message, what we covered is that all of humanity is either in Adam or they're in Christ. So these believers here, because they've had faith in what God told them, they are in Christ. And it's the same thing for us. If we've trusted in the blood of Christ as atonement for our sins, we have eternal life. We are taken out of Adam. We are placed into Christ. So I put on your outline that the way we are holy today is that we are in Christ. That last fill in the blank is that the way we are holy today is that we are in Christ. So when you see there in verse 4, it says, O Lord, Thou only art holy. You don't have to worry about it. It's not that, it's not that we're excluded, but it's just because we've been placed into Christ when He looks at us. Certainly our works did not get us into heaven. But... When God looks at us, He sees us being in Christ in His Son. And since His Son is holy, then He sees us as holy so that we can dwell with Him forever. Uh, with that, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank You for the Lord Jesus Christ, for His perfect life, for His death on the cross, and the ability to be placed into Him so that we can enjoy all the spiritual blessings and heavenly places that are in Christ that You've promised to us for all eternity. 
Help us as we continue to live on this earth to recognize that faith that it's nothing that we do so we may read your word, be edified in it, and walk in the Spirit. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.